Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. During the height of the financial crisis in late 2008, the Federal Reserve launched quantitative easing. That basically means the Fed purchased bonds from Wall Street. The program was intended to provide credit to Main Street homes and businesses, but five years later, many critics claim the principal beneficiaries have been Wall Street banks. We asked some folks here in Baltimore to get their thoughts on this policy. What do you think the Federal Reserve Chair should do uh, to stimulate the economy? Um, actually, if they're going to print some money for banks, I think they should print some money for the people, get some jobs, get somebody out there working that hasn't been working. We need jobs. I think on the federal level, they should mandate that these people get here, give their jobs to the people in the communities and not go outside of their state. Do you think it's a good idea for the Federal Reserve to give trillions of dollars to big banks to shore up the economy and stimulate it? Not without knowing that the banks are going to give the funds back to the, um, you know, to the appropriate uh, people to uh, make, the, make the economy better. Now joining us to get into the numbers and un unpack all of this is Bob Poland. Bob is the founder and co-director of the Perry Institute at UMass Amherst, and he joins us now from Amherst, Massachusetts. Good to see you again, Bob. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for having me on, Jessica. So Bob, can you just briefly explain the Fed's bond buying program known as quantitative easing? Yeah, the quantitative easing is a variation on what the Fed always does. The Fed basically buys bonds in order to lower interest rates. And the typical way that they used to buy bonds was buying very short-term bonds to lower just the short-term interest rate. But under quantitative easing, the Fed also buys longer-term treasuries like five years, 10 years, instead of three months, six months bonds, in order to push down the long-term uh, interest rates as well as the short-term interest rates. Because as you said at the top of the show, the interest rates that apply to businesses haven't come down nearly as much as the interest rates that are available to the big banks. So even though, even though we are five years into this very aggressive monetary policy, uh, we, what we've still seen is that small businesses have been starved for credit since 2008. And of course, you know that vice chairman of the Fed right now, Janet Yellen, it looks like she's going to be confirmed and become the new Fed chair. She's come out saying that she'll basically keep the same stimulus program as the current chair, Ben Bernanke. What's your response to claims that quantitative easing has mostly only benefited the banks? Well, it hasn't only benefited the banks. It has vastly disproportionately benefited the banks. Um, uh, that's unfortunate. So it's really too bad. Uh, as I think I've said else uh, on previous occasions on the show, given you know the state of conceivable people to take over at the Fed, Janet Yellen, in my view, is about as good as you, you're going to get. That she is concerned with unemployment. She is concerned with well-being for low-income people and improving conditions. Um, all that said, and the Fed is operating by historic standards, an extremely aggressive policy by keeping the interest rates for banks so low. But that policy is only a stimulus for the banks so far. The banks have piled up $2 trillion in cash reserves. Nothing like that has ever happened. 12% of US GDP, while small, the small business sector overall is still starved for credit. In fact, overall, they have not gotten a dime of net new credit since 2008. Again, also unprecedented. So the problem is not stimulus, no stimulus. The problem is Yellen and Bernanke are practicing a stimulus program that is not well designed to accomplish what needs to get accomplished, which is to deliver affordable credit to small businesses, and to expand opportunities for working people, not just for the banks. I mentioned this a little bit, Bob, but I want to get into more of what the bank could be doing to help everyday people. The way you look at it, what could the Fed actually be doing policy-wise to make sure that banks are giving out loans to small businesses and homeowners and, and people like that? 
Well, I think they could do two simple things. One, tax the banks for holding so much cash in reserve. The banks are getting this money for free. It's a zero interest rate policy that the Fed is practicing and the banks have piled up $2 trillion in cash reserves. So the banks are sitting on a cash hoard. That should be taxed. Not all the way down so they will hold nothing. They do need to have cash reserves uh, to get through a, any future crises as a cushion, as a safety net, but $2 trillion is wildly excessive. I mean, we could pump in $1 trillion. That's about 6% of GDP. And they would still have $1 trillion in reserve. So that's number one. Number two, the government does have a um, credit program for small businesses that is supposed to give out affordable loans and is supposed to give favorable conditions to small businesses. It's too small. It needs to be expanded. And it needs to get into banks thinking about uh, doing things for small businesses. Right now, the banks have just decided that's not what they're interested in. They're interested in speculating uh, on you know, these uh, very, very obtuse, obscure financial products that have the potential of very high returns uh, without having to do research, without having to go into communities, without having to give breaks to small business people. That's, that's the business that they're in now. We need to change that. And the next thing is, if they're not going to do it, then we have to have the Fed and the public sector start making loans to small businesses and creating those opportunities. All right, Bob Polin, always a pleasure having you on The Real News. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.